Okay, so uh, if you type here your Gmail credentials and your Gmail password, and you click on next, you see we are not in Gmail, but uh, this is, it is important that you don't, you don't do it like this. You can put it in a frame, you can put it somewhere, but it depends on the on the way that you are using it because nowadays you also have some browser restrictions. You have uh, some policies in browser uh, that you can, you need to walk around um, in order to uh, you know, do this type of attacks. Uh, it's not as easy as 10 years ago. That's, uh, that's what I'm trying to say. But with the exploit package, it's not as dumb as uh, just having a page and then the post just uh, going, when you click next, it will just go there. But uh, basically you have, you can have it in real time. Oh, sorry for the tab. Uh, so basically it doesn't matter if you type next or not because uh, the, it will it will be sent out uh, to, to exploit pack, doesn't matter what, because um, if I have the keylogger running, actually, let me check on that, is that one? Oh, maybe I don't have it running correctly. Uh, but then you will you will get it. What I, what I meant is the keylogger. The keylogger will will be running here, and then when you don't need to type next. Oh yes, it was like that, and now I have this. Yeah, you see how AAA password uh, one two two. So. All right. Uh, so I I have I don't even need to click on next. Um, that I will get the password directly here, right? So that's the difference. And also, if if you if I type my real uh, Gmail and click on next, it will actually take me to Gmail because it is the Gmail page at the end. It's, it's, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just uh, loading the Gmail uh, login into my page and then adding on top of it my JavaScript and then choose reading whatever goes from the input. And then when click on next, it goes into Gmail. Uh, it's not on Gmail domain, but it will take me to Gmail and it will log me in into my Gmail account, right? So yeah, I'm not doing it so you, <laughs> so I don't show my Gmail uh, email to everyone, but it's just, that's actually it. In the other type of, uh, uh, in the typical phishing campaigns that you will see, um, most of the cases they they are they are replacing this with a post, and then this one goes into typically a PHP page, and then it will send these two inputs into there. And so this is. Uh, I think this is still quite dumb, but still uh, a little bit better. Um, so don't do it for Gmail. What you need to do is to do it for the logins that the the web their, their own websites, their own infrastructure, their own company is using something that it will be more obscure, something that is not part of the social networks, something that, is, uh, that they rely upon, that's something that they are aware that no one should be targeting to, uh, so something something like that will, should be your target. Um, something from a tea party company, even something like it. So you need to think out of the box. Once you are there, and once you get into the tier stage, then you can uh, you can move into the endpoint itself. To move into the endpoint, uh, to the endpoint, you can use uh, the reverse shells that we have here. So basically, to take control of the endpoint, and basically that that would be the game over. So basically, with the endpoint, with the with the BBS, uh, you can take control of uh, uh, you can take control of. Uh, of the directly of the bro of the machine of the so basically if of the user that they are logged in into the computer or you can use the a reverse shell uh, with a python type of uh, shell and you can do it for linux mac or windows and if you want you can even use uh, py2exe and then you can make it uh, executable and 
as of today, uh, these two type of shells are not detected by uh, ATP or any other antivirus or uh, CrowdStrike or any DR solution, but it's not guarantee, as I mentioned, uh, in the world that we live on, uh, that they are going to remain like that. And it doesn't matter how good the software it is. It depends most of uh, how many people is using it. And Exploit Pack is not an obscure product, but it's not as used as Metasploit or Cobalt Strike. So if you use Cobalt Strike, then everything is going to be detected. It doesn't matter how far and how much you want to obfuscate it, adapt it, modify it, it's going to be detected. Um, because they are detecting just small keywords or more words and small stuff, and it's going to be detected. And same for Metasploit, same for other type of uh, solutions. With, Cobo, with uh, Exploit Pack, the good thing about it is that uh, BBS script, it can be easily obfuscated, adapted, and modified. And typically, uh, BBS, why, why is it BBS and it's not PowerShell or, or something like it? Because <laughs> EDR solutions, uh, they don't detect BBS in most of the cases, but they do detect 100% of uh, PowerShell scripts. Yes, uh, so that's why we have to go old school. And if you want, you can even go more old school and go to batch files. And then it's like, hey, dude, but the batch files are from, I don't know, 40 years ago. Well, but they are not detected by EDR solutions. They don't care about it. So whatever typically you do on, on batch, dot bat files, like the all, all really, really all BBS, uh, uh, from the bulletin boards, uh, type of uh, malware. Yeah, well, 2021, welcome to DR solutions. They don't care about those now, next year. Don't so don't, don't invest your life into writing the most advanced uh, BBS or batch script. Uh, because next year they will just say, okay, we are also gonna uh, build a parser or uh, intercept that, and then they're gonna choose. That trend's not gonna happen. So PowerShell, everyone was doing it. Everyone was using PowerShell because it's, it's, it's an amazing way to get access to resources uh, of .NET, of, uh, of directly of the internals of the operating system that are totally open through PowerShell. And that's why PowerShell is quite, uh, uh, quite a big uh, target for EDRs uh, type of solution and, uh, and most of the antivirus. So yeah, so if you if you if you try to use PowerShell, most of the cases you're gonna be detected and it's gonna be flagged directly. So yeah, sadly we need to go back to PBS and bat files and also to custom custom code. It's not gonna be detected, but it needs to actually be quite custom. Or you need to uh, try to bypass the R. So if we want to talk about EDR solutions, we can talk for on an extra hour, but there are uh, a lot of uh, things you can do nowadays uh, for bypassing EDR solutions. But yes, uh, well, actually I have something that is a, uh, a type of uh, uh, ransomware that uh, lives on a DLL that is currently not detected by any EDR solution, but okay, uh, that's uh, out of the scope of uh, this talk. But there are some ways uh, doing advanced stuff that uh, you need to uh, go back into uh, into the prehistoric era of uh, of computers uh, to not be detected. But it can change tomorrow. It can change next month. So we need to adapt. So it, it could be that next year. Uh, if you look at this, uh, uh, the recording of this video uh, next year, you say, oh, this guy is stuck in gibberish. Everything that uh, he says is being currently detected. And we move into technology C and B, and then uh, nothing what he said is working anymore. Yeah, and so I'm sorry, but that's, that's the case of uh, how it works now. All right, so going back to the shells, you need to decide if, if you move, if you still going, if still going strong with exploit pack and you want to use a reverse shell or a PBS shell with exploit pack, that's gonna work. It's gonna be, it's gonna should bypass currently or EDR solutions and should it be detected? And if, and if something is detected, you can choose, uh, try to detect what is the line that is being detected and then choose modified it. 
the BBS script is it does abuse of the same uh, trick of uh, the browser. Basically, it sends everything that is being sent through through a browser channel. So basically, uh, you will get a new browser here, but that that agent will have access. So basically, the browser shell. So you will see a new browser shell here, but instead of being choose a JavaScript uh, agent, it's gonna be a JavaScript agent with the steroids because it will get, give you access to directly to the BBS that is running with the user, with the power of the user that is running on the on the underlying operating system. So uh, if it's running system, you will get system. If it's running a regular user, you will get regular user rights. If it's if, if a user with admin rights, then you will get admin and so on and so forth. And that's it. And then that will be game over. Um, that will game game over and it depends on um, on game over for exploit pack because you will get access there, but the red team exercise should continue from there because at that moment, you will have access to the endpoint itself, but then you need to move into the crown tool or into what is the sensitive information or to the lateral movement. And then from there, you need to start thinking on how can you scan the network? How can you get access into the network itself? and uh, uh, without getting detected or something like it. If you can impersonate an employee, that would be the best case because that you can just ask. If it's uh, HR, then you can just drop an email to someone and say, hey, I don't know about this. Can you help me reach this document on where? And then they will just help you because you are an employee. Um, if you cannot go to that because maybe the company that you are targeting to doesn't speak your same language and you can be easily uh, isolated from the rest uh, uh, because uh, if they talk Spanish and then you your mother language is English, then uh, they're gonna easily recognize you that uh, the, that you are, you are not speaking correctly or yeah, so basically, uh, that's quite important that you that you need to know. Uh, maybe the customs, maybe uh, what do they do? What is a typical day on that company? So don't sleep uh, on the yeah. Don't sleep on uh, on the yeah on the fulfillment of saying I have access to the endpoint because choose that's just the starting point. When you get access to the endpoint, then the real work start. You need to start doing lateral movement from there. And then you can start repeating the same scenario, but from the inside, that's what I would recommend. So same scenario from the inside mean you can drop again the browser shell, but on, on, on one of the internal resources. Because so far we say how we can get access to exploit pack using the browser shell as a, as a starting point because it's not gonna be detected. And choose because of that. That's not because it's, it's a great it's a great way or it's, if you have a better way, choose go with that. But always have in mind that you need to use uh, and need to exploit the weakest link and, some, and it, you cannot be detected because if you are detected, then you will trigger all type of alarms and they are gonna uh, set the attitude of the employees in a different way and it's not gonna work. So choose, um, just go with the flow and then from the inside you will get to know maybe they are using this type of ticketed system and then you can maybe drop something there uh and you I, I don't know if they are using a tool like jira or they are using i, I don't know any any type of tool like that that is uh, currently used as a ticket system uh, click up i don't know any tool uh then you can try to set up a lab try to see how you can uh, uh, execute a JavaScript or something like it, or maybe you can just drop something there or send something to someone, but somehow uh, you need to abuse your internal access without uh, raising any alarm to, and um, yeah, to, to basically repeat the same scenario and start your lateral movement. Uh, the worst thing you can do is to get access to an endpoint, start running a network scan, uh, there, like running the typical way will be just run MBAP against anything and then or run Nessus and then uh, from that endpoint and then you will try that. That's the worst because, uh, yes, you can get uh, uh, an exploit or you can get uh, access to some something or somewhere. That's that's the worst. It's going to be detected so easily and and and, and 
if it's not detected, it means that the company wasn't ready for our red team exercises anyway. So that's that's there is you don't you need no proof because if 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 you were able to uh, hack them doing that, then it means that the company wasn't ready yet for a red team exercise, or that they are doing uh, something uh, black hat and and that's the easiest way. But all right, it shouldn't be like that. Um, so what you can do is to uh, abuse the the yeah abuse the trust the, among the company, get to know what how do they share stuff. Maybe uh, you are trying to get um, you know uh, access to a server with an exploit and then going really complex, writing your own zero day for this particular custom server that is only used on that company because it's uh, it's a built-in house, and then you manage to find a, a, a find a. a, a uh, I don't know, an SQL injection or a buffer overflow or, or a heap overflow, whatever, uh, memory corruption out there, and then you try to exploit it, you spend three months, and then you find out that all these passwords for the administration panel of this uh, server is on the wiki. And then it's, don't go, don't go there. So you need to first try to find the weakest path to success. And in most of the cases, it's just asking people, exploiting people, exploiting the way they work and exploiting, exploiting uh, how do they interact between each other? Because what we are trying to exploit here is the company itself and not the technologies that the company use. Uh, always do everything on labs and yeah, and, and you, will be, uh, you will be fine. All right, guys. Uh, I think I show you enough. I uh, I bother you guys for for an hour so far. I hope you enjoyed this training. If you have any questions regarding the red team exercises and how to uh, use exploit pack for that, there is much more you can do with exploit pack. But it will be depend depending on the type of uh, red team exercise that you want to fulfill uh, and. And of course, feel free uh, to reach us out if you have any question for that, or you are thinking on a scenario and you want to know if Exploit Pack will help you with that. We, we might be able to uh, guide you through, or if not, we might able we might be able to suggest uh, tools that you can use, maybe open source or maybe you, maybe tools that are commercial tools or are commercial tools. Uh, we don't we, we are not building Exploit Pack just to be the most amazing tool that you can use and the only tool so far that you need in the future. Now, Exploit Pack is going to fulfill a few of your needs. It's going to be a great tool for some stuff, but it's not going to be uh, the, the only tool that you need. Um, actually, in my own desktop, I have Metasploit, I have Exploit Pack, I have, uh, I, uh, for instance, for debuggers, I love to use Ida Pro, but I also have GDB, I also have uh, uh, Immunity Canvas, and, and so on, and Radar. So I, I use the tool that, that is best suite for the needs of uh, what I'm doing, of course. Uh, I prefer to use exploit packs most of the time because I can adapt it, I can modify it, and it, it works well. And it is is quite food uh, in most of the cases. Just like when when I do in some reversing, I like to use Ida Pro uh, because I prefer to use that tool because it's a, it's a, it's an all around better tool for the stuff that I do. But um, yeah. As I said, if you, if you have any question on you, we can recommend you anything uh, that you can use. We will try to be on your side and try to uh, uh, yeah and help you reach uh, your goals. Okay, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, training. It was quite different. Uh, uh, most of the time, we we do less talking and and. 90% of practical, uh, technical stuff. But in this case, uh, we need more talking than anything else. Hope, uh, hope it was good and hope you enjoyed. Thanks, guys. And see you in the next one.